الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله Islam is built upon brotherhood and the collective duties such as the salat the hajj jihad fi sabilillah However, that does not necessitate unifying under all circumstances. As many other Islamic concepts illustrate that are in the shara. For example, if a Muslim is able to change or advise his Muslim brother to avoid sin or refrain from uh, continual sinful behavior or bid'ah, then he should do so. And perhaps that commanding the good and forbidding the evil may become an obligation upon him. So the texts are clear as far as unifying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to be one ummah holding all to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the Qur'an, as some of the Mufassireen say. And some of them interpret it to mean all of Islam, or the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So, وَاَتَّسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا All of you have to hold to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And do not divide. This is a a base principle in Islam. However, there are different ways people understand this. Ahl Sunnah, in the past, up until now, understand this to mean that we have to unify the Muslims based on the book in the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf. This is what Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah understands how they understand this these uh, nasus or this text that we must unify we must try to keep together we must this is so important for us to be brothers and sisters look at all the issues and confusion and difficulties that we face around the world but it's muqayyid in the ahl sunnah with ahl sunnah they restrict it they restrict it to the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the madhab of the salaf there are many other diverse groups now in contemporary times and former Salafis and former people from Ahl Sunnah who now call for unifying and being silent about all bid'ah, just as long as we are many in numbers. But this goes against the divine text. And a memhaj or a methodology such as that will never succeed, even if it's uh, even if many of the people like that and many of the people accept that for example in the West we're challenged with this now with a backlash with so many even the du'at the people who are callers who are imams who speak ill about scholars of Ahl Sunnah and speak ill about callers to Ahl Sunnah because they feel that it's going against unity now if we just be, keep silent and we so what if some of the brothers are Akhwan and Muslimin? So what if some of them are Jamaat al-Takfir wa Hijra? So what if some of them want to go Khuruj fi sabilillah a Jamaat al-Tabliq? So what if some of them want to go to the Sufi shrines and supp supplicate and, and slaughter animals? As long as we're unified. But this is a base qaida and principle of Akhwan and Muslimin which will never ever succeed. No matter how much we want unity, and we want unity, we want to be one, but we, as Ahl Sunnah bi Allah Ta'ala, we try to go back, we realize that it's muqayyid. It's restricted to the book in the Sunnah and the Madhab the Salaf. We, we, we can't get away from it. Even if we try, we try. And when I listen to people like Yasser Qadi and others, unfortunately some of his people who, who have empathy and sympathy and who love him and who are supposed to be callers of the sunnah, that what we find is these individuals, they hold some of the same base principles as Yasser 
and they will advise the people, hey, it's okay to take from multitudes of different manahij. Why are we restricting ourselves to a minhaj? Because that's what the Prophet alayhi salatu salam restricted to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all throughout the Quran exalts us, and urges us, commands us to worship Him and Him alone. The call to Tawheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we can have a kareem. وَمَا خَلَقْتُوا الْجِنَّ وَلَنْتَ لَلِي عَبْدُونَ I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al kareem also mentions that all the prophets alayhim afdal salatu was salam they began their da'wah with tawheed. They began their call and they all kept to this call of tawheed. So that means it's significant for all of us throughout time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem wa laqad ba'athna fi kulli ummati wa rasulin in ni'budullah which tani butaqud we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid those things prohibited uh, that are worshiped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's the call to tawhid and the warning against shirk Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem wa abudullah wa la tushriku bi shay'in worship Allah Allah commands us and so when there's a command we know the asl of a command is that it's an obligation. Unless there's other nusus to show that that command goes from being a, an obligation, you know, to, to wajib, to mustahab, or one of the other ahkam khamsa. So we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us, wa'budullaha, it's in the imperative form. Worship Allah. Wala tushriku bi shayin. There's a nafi wal ithbat, or there's ithbat wa nafi. Here, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making ithbat, he's affirming that you worship him and him alone, which is Tawheed, Tawheed al ibadah And he is prohibiting and negating that you com associate partners with him, committing shirk. The greatest thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded was Tawheed. And the greatest thing, or the most severe thing that he warned us against is shirk, associating partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how is it that the Muslims can be expected, or they think, or these du'at, think that possibly that the Muslims will unite when so many don't even want to talk about Tawheed. Are you telling me Jamaat Tablik that that's from their usul and their asas? Not really, they say ikhlas, but they don't want to go outside of Rububiya. And that's why our Shaykh, Shaykh Muqbil bin Hadi al he said you'll find one going with Jamaat Tablik for 20 years, and this is from his experience. And so many of us, we know this. And those people who have been in the Jama'at know this. And he doesn't even, he, he worshiped graves. Why? Because Tawheed wasn't important. It was just important to have numbers and make khuruj and call the people to Salat. Likewise, Ikhwan al-Muslimin. Having all of these diverse groups that focus on political ideologies. Look at these, this, some of these people in America that are a part of the LGBT you know, the, the gay and lesbian community and wearing a khimar and jeans talking about help Palestine. What kind of Islam is that? How does that relate to the call of the messengers? Alayhim Abdul Salat Salam Abedin, Abedin, can you think that there, there will be real unity because they will never accept you because the Prophet وسلم, prophesied that we would split and divide. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If tarakat al Yahuda la it was a rain firka, if tarakat al Nasara la it natain was a rain firka, was a taftariku hadi umma la thalata was a rain firka. Kulluha ila nar ila wahida. The Prophet وسلم, said the Jews break into 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my umma into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And they said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? The Prophet ﷺ said, Man kana ala mithi wa ma kana ala wa ashabi al yawm. Kama qala Nabi sallallahu The Prophet ﷺ answered the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala in Majma'in because they wanted ilm al nafi They wanted to know what was going to give them success and what was going to uh, protect them from the fire. They weren't concerned about numbers. They weren't concerned about uh, just dealing with social problems. And, and, and they weren't just worried about getting numbers and, and following their desires. But they wanted to know what's going to get me to paradise, what's going to protect me from hell. Al-Manafiyah. That's Al-Manafiyah. Al-Mashar. Knowledge of the Sharia. 
So the Prophet said, those, those ones that are going to be saved are those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. So how is it that we can accept the statements of some of these du'ad who just say, hey, let's all be silent about the mistakes of in each of these jama'at. We all have mistakes. Let's just unify and forgive one another and keep silent about the bid'ah and sometimes shirkiyat of one another. It doesn't go with the minhaj and nabuwa. It doesn't go with the methodology of the Prophet Abidin. We are ordered to follow the Prophet Obey Allah and obey his messenger. We're ordered to follow his, his, his way. The prophetic way, which is that call to tawheed, which is that pure da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah. Because da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah developed from who? From the companions, radiallahu ta'ala majma'in. They're the ru'us of jama'ah. They're the head of the, of the jama'ah. Radiallahu ta'ala majma'in. How is it that you can unite with those people who curse the Sahaba? And you're telling me you're going to be successful. How, 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 what kind of success are you going to get from that? And what kind of real unity? Because at the same time, while you're saying, radiallahu ta'ala an, and you're saying, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, is the um al mu'minin, he's cursing her and, and making dua against her and making takfir of her and calling her a, an adulteress. How? I, 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 logically, it doesn't make sense. Their dawah, the dawah of, of ahl al batal wal ahwa, it never makes sense. And that's why the Salafi madhab, the Salafi minhaj, not I'm talking about a clique. I'm not talking about just calling yourself Salafi. I'm talking about following the usul of Ahl Sunnah that this, it's, it's Aslam. It's the safest. Wa ahkam. And it's the most knowledgeable. And it has the most thick and the most wisdom and the freest from desires. The Prophet ﷺ said, فَمَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْ Whoever lives after me will see many differences. Then he gave you the prescription. It wasn't Dr. Qadi's prescription and, 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 and some of the other people who follow him and follow his madhab and love what he's talking about, this progressive new methodology. No, Abedin. Abedin, it wasn't that. But the Prophet alayhi salatu salam who we follow, who we've been commanded to follow, who we worship in accordance with his sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, alaykum be sunnati. It's upon you, my sunnah. If you want the prescription for all these social ills, all these problems, all these new ideologies that you have to combat, you have to fight these ideologies. All the people who are now making homosexual masjids, transgender masjids, women that are leading the salat for men, all of these new concepts that have unheard of in the history of Islam, new threats to the da'wah to Tawheed, that you'll never have success. The Prophet ﷺ said, alaykum bi sunnati. This is the prescription. It's upon you my sunnah. Wa sunnatu khulafa rashidin al mahdin And the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifa, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, Wa Ali, radiallahu ta'ala majma'in. So how is it that you can unite and follow with those who curse them and attack them. So I wanted to bring some clarity to the youth because when you have these callers that are so popular out there distorting the call to Islam, that this causes confusion. This is causes the youth and it causes, this is how innovation in the religion and heresy and ilhad and all of these very serious uh, serious ways that they spread throughout the community and all throughout the communities prior to us prior to us prior to the Muslims were commanded with Amr bin Ma'ruf and Munkar, commanding the good and forbidding the evil and from commanding the good and forbidding the evil is refuting religious heresy bid'ah in its various forms, whether that be bid'a mukafra, the bid'a that takes you out of the fold of Islam, or bid'a ghayr mukafra, or bid'a which is, uh, which uh, does not take a person out of the fold of Islam. Because that is in order to protect the religion of Islam. That is in order to safeguard the tenets of Islam, the creed of Ahlul Sunnah. And that is to refute Ahlul Batil. And that is to safeguard 
the prophetic way. So this is something known. And the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Abi Sayyid al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yuqul min ra'a minkum munqarif adhi ghayruhu biyad fa inna mistati'ifa bi lisanih fa inna mistati'ifa bi qalbihi wa thalika aruf al-iman ruahu muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said whoever from amongst you sees a good and whoever from amongst you sees uh, that which is sinful then change it with his hands. If he's unable to do so then change it with his tongue, speak out against it. If he's then unable to do so, then change it with his heart, and that's the weakest form of the faith. So we know that commanding the good and forbidding the evil is something which is agreed upon in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That from the people of the past up until now, this is an important principle, and those who leave it and abandon it, then they have to be fearful of the punishment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And part of commanding the good and forbidding the evil is not accepting new ideologies into the religion of Islam. Not to accept extremism. Not accept uh, accepting uh, mumayya ideology where you throw away the principles of Ahl Sunnah in order for the sake of so-called unity. That doesn't mean you don't have hikmah and wisdom in your call. That doesn't mean you, you don't address the needs all of your community. But it means you cannot compromise those tenets of Islam. You cannot compromise the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah in order to just get numbers. It never works anyhow. It never works. You don't build a strong community. You don't build strong students of knowledge from that. Abedin. You don't bring, bring about rectification and defense of the religion of Islam that way. Abedin. No. So it's very important to know and understand that this is a part when when you hear some of those du'at and you hear the ulama speaking against certain groups and individuals, you should not feel uh, saddened by that unless it's excessive and unless it's with, done with injustice. Because that is an integral part of Islam. Do you What kind of Islam would you have if it weren't for the madhab of Ahl Sunnah defending the religion throughout history? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defended his deen through men through men who preserved the sunnah, who practiced it, who preached it, who refuted Ahl bidah It has to be done. It's an obligation. Even if Ahl bidah the people of desires, hate it, they do hate it because they just want to unify. They just want to make new pacts with everyone. It doesn't matter if he's from ISIS. It doesn't matter if he's a Rafida. It doesn't matter if he's this. But we just have to keep unity. We have to keep unity in the community. It's America. Let's just unify. Where, what kind of dawah is that? What what success do you think you really have? Abed then, never. So it's been very important for those people who involve themselves, and this should be done with the ulama. Again, I don't want to make this too long, but I just want to say a few points. Is that one, when people are refuting, meaning those people of knowledge, so we need our scholars and we need our students of knowledge to lead the way. We don't need the lay persons, the average person should not be involved in these affairs. But we need to have a correct intention when you're doing this. That you are there to either rectify that individual, you know, if, you have, if you're making hajr of that person, or you're uh, uh, making tibdi of them, or whatever the case may be, that it should, you should have a good intention that you are trying to really, that this is an act of ibadah. You're trying to seek, to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to protect his deen from harm, not as a personal issue, not as a racist issue, not as a nationalistic issue, but rather because this person is presenting a threat to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in their dawah and in their methodology and in their new creed that they are inventing. So you should have a good intention. Also, it needs to be have done, you need to have wisdom and hikmah. And you need to have justice in balance. And you need to know for sure, is it a mistake if you're refuting someone? Is it truly a mistake? Or is it something that is مُخْتَلِفِي بَيْنَ أَحْلَ sunnah That's something where there's a difference between أَحْلَ sunnah for example, in many Masail al-Fiqiyah, in fiqh issues, perhaps there's, there, there's, uh, there's many, many things where the ulama of أَحْلَ sunnah in the past, whether they be Malikiya, Shafi'iyya, Hanabila, or Hanafiya, that they differed on so many issues in fiqh. 
But Ahlul Sunnah does not differ in creed. You don't say, oh, this one says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere, he's from Ahlul Sunnah. No. This one negates that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his throne. We can't say he's from Ahlul Sunnah with this creed. This one says, this one makes takfir of the leaders, and this one does this, and this one. They're not from Ahlul Sunnah. So you can't unite with those, and you cannot accept those ideologies, and you have to know that those are bid'ah that need to be refuted. From those who are Ahlan, those people who have the knowledge and the ability to do so. You have to be truthful with the people that you are refuting. You can't lie about them. I can't say, and I keep using a, a Qadi, Dr. Qadi as an example, but I can't start speaking about him and lying about him. I need to bring, what is he saying? What is he saying that's going against the book and the sunnah and, and the madhab of the salaf? If that's the case, if he's going against the book and the sunnah in this issue, then we need to talk about that and, and give dalil. We can't lie and exaggerate and read into his intentions without the right to do so. So it's very important that we have, uh, that we're just and we're truthful and that we have uh, the wisdom. There is so much to say in this regard of Habit al I just wanted to bring some clarity to the youth that not to be confused about all the madness that's going on and unfortunately it will continue, but that you need to learn your religion. You need to learn your religion from those people who are calling to the book and the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and the madhab of the salaf. You, you have to. Because if you take another path, and if you think it's okay to have an eclectic minhaj, you will have no minhaj. You will see. We have experience with it. We've seen how many people. And you've seen so many people who jump. They're a Sufi one day. They're a jihadi, tekfiri the next day. The next day, they're this. Next day, then they go back to Sufism. Next thing you know, they're out of Islam. Many people like this. Many people I personally know. So that's why it's very important to ask and beg your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. Ask him for ikhlas with the bat ala sunnah, firmness and sincere, you know, and sincerity to him that this is worship. This is your deen. You can't play with your deen, and this is why it's so shameful. And I hope the students gather together to deal with some of these new, uh, newly invented ideologies and go hard on them because they because they are distorting uh, Islam for many of the people. And we ask of all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.